The Drop with Frank and Brian is officially brought to you by Switch Suspension. Switch Suspension specializes in all vehicle chassis components. Lift kits, lowering kits, air ride suspension, wheels, tires, steering, and brake upgrades. They use all the best products from the best brands. And these guys are truck guys. You roll into their parking lot at the shop and they all drive custom vehicles. So they use their products that they sell on their own vehicles. So if you guys are looking for anything for your vehicles, whether you're just starting out or you just need some replacement parts or whatever, give them a call or visit their website, switchsuspension.com. Just want to let you guys know that we're announcing our next giveaway. We're giving away another Accuware E-Level kit. Big thanks to Accuware for getting with us on this giveaway. All you got to do is either go to livelifecustom.com or grinder-tv.com and every $5 spent, you get one entry to the draw. Enjoy this week's episode. Yeah, try new things. Yeah, try so new things. So you're going to have to get... Um, yeah, and looking at new laptops, huh? Oh my gosh, my whole life is currently is just looking at things that I need to upgrade in my household. Laptops, I'll tell you, I'll, couches, I'll tell you, fridges. I'll tell you what, though. Once you do it, then you don't like. It's like I went through this phase where I was updating cameras and updating and buying lenses and buying computers mm-hmm. and all this stuff. But now I'm to the point where now everything is like, like there's nothing left to buy. Because you've upgraded everything. Yeah, so, like, you've gone now over, what, 12, 13 years be- without, without a this, new laptop. This is a 2011. <laughs> yeah, so I had a 2011, and I went to a 2015, mm-hmm. and now this one. Yeah, what's what, the, the current one you have is, is, like, a new, new one? So they have, Apple now has M1, M2, and M3. Mm-hmm. I have an M1. So, that's, remember when I told you to buy an M1? Yeah. You probably should have bought one then, because they were so cheap. Oh, really? And now you can't get them. Oh, so you could have got a brand new M1 MacBook Pro for like six or seven hundred dollars oh, off. Wow. wow! Now they're not available. So now you you could look at the used M2s now that the M3s are out because the the M1, M2, and M3 for what we do is it like it doesn't like if you're working on an M3 mm-hmm. versus an M1, you're not going to see a difference. Mm-hmm. So if you can save five hundred plus dollars just by going to an M2. Just by and it's still brand new. It's still mm-hmm. from Best Buy, so it's not like you're buying a used one or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, you're just literally buying the older model of the newest computer. Yeah. Well, so let's see how it goes. First, got to get through the holidays. Oh, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas to everybody. Today is Christmas Day. No one's listening to this right I now. I know. Either. I was. No <laughs> one's driving to work. I thought that. I'm all. If you're li- okay, hold on. I wanted to address this. If you are, okay. if it's Monday morning and you are listening, go be with your family. Yeah, go leave it. Go, go, leave, go, go. You don't need to listen to <laughs> any of this stuff we're talking about right now. Listen come back to it tomorrow. The next day on the way to work. Yes, come back tomorrow when you are post Christmas and you're on your way to work. And if there is anyone listening, having having this on on the TV while you're opening presents, send us a picture. That'd be that'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Dad. And then it's just us talking about bulk because bullshit. we kind of have a Christmas present for everybody, right? Are we gonna um, show everyone the new shirt? I don't know what your time schedule oh. is on printing that. Oh the oh the uh the drop shirt. Yeah. Oh, roll it. Let it roll. It's 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 in production. Okay, so Merry Christmas everyone. We have new shirts this for the shirt, drop. This shirt right here. And for our audio right listeners, you definitely you have to come over to the YouTube channel yeah, you to see to, it. Yeah, cuz we're not going to we will actually we should have done a pre-order. Did you already order shirts? Uh no. Okay. Should we do a pre-order? We should do a pre-order. Yeah, it's, yeah, definitely. All right. Let's do a pre-order from Christmas Day from now mm-hmm. until the first of the year. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. that Even though everybody's it. already blown all their money on Christmas presents, are they? No, gonna... they got gift cards. Okay. Oh, they get gift. Huh? Gift. They got gift cards. Oh, like Visa gift cards. Like these. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. See. Yeah. Okay. All right. You could spend your money with us, and then you could possibly win Accuware. Exactly. Oh, because we have an Accuware drawing going down right now. Yeah. When when are we doing that? Did we say mid month or end of January? What did we uh, say? We said end end of January. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so people have some time on that to recover from Christmas, use their gift cards on the website, um, purchase stuff. I like, I was wondering, cause like this is, we still have a week to go before, um, new year's. So mm-hmm. do we start talking about our, like, do we spend this episode talking about what's happened in 2023 and then the next episode, I, what's happening I was th- next? I was thinking that exact same thing. Okay. And I said, oh, we should probably wait a week. Yeah, before we like yeah. really lay out everything that we got going on for the next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is our Christmas episode. Christmas. Next week mm-hmm. will be our New Year's episode. Yeah, and we'll talk about, because we're rolling. 
We're rolling. I don't, I'm not going to get into details because we'll wait till next week. But I am very proud of myself because I'm a month ahead. Yeah. On everything. It's, it's it awesome. It feels good, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Good. It feels amazing. It yeah, feels really I'm good. waiting for our artwork for our show mm. um, because I want to announce the date that we're opening up pre-reg. Oh, but with, I want to do it. I want to do it with the artwork. Yeah. Brandon calls me the other day and he goes, hey, just so you know, we drew Graham's artwork before yours. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> and I said, I'm used to it, man. It's okay. I said, I've been, we've been doing this for, me and Brandon have been back and forth on artwork now for the 24 years. Uh-huh. That's a long time. Like, it is a From long time. From the infinite design days. Infinite design. Yeah. It. So every time I call him, I hear it's the same thing. And so now I'm just like, you don't even have to say anything, Brandon. Yeah. I'm just calling you to keep my name in your head. Yeah, yeah. You know, no, so. and that's fine. And that it, look, we that was the, uh, inadvertently us kind of conceding to Graham for taking so long to make videos. There, you get your artwork first. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, we, <laughs> not, not that we had any control over that, but I'm no, just no. saying, <laughs> not at all. Um, but yeah, so yeah, well, next week we'll talk about like, well, lot, not, there's so much exciting stuff about to happen. I'm very excited. I on this podcast we talk a lot about um like executing ideas, coming up with ideas, executing ideas and holding ourselves accountable to to executing those ideas. And I have We've been and we've been talking a lot about that like yeah. this this whole year. Yes, and I hit the mark. I'm yeah. very proud of myself. <laughs> like I said, it feels good, man. I I I started kind of getting a little bit ahead and then I I like wanted to project that that how it felt how good it felt. Mhm towards you a little bit, you know, like, yeah. Hey, come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Cause I know by the time LST comes around and mini nets and we're probably, we're already in the next week's episode. Cause we're talking about the future now. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, it feels, it just feels good. Yeah. feels great. And we'll get into those details later, but for now we, we can will. at least say that we have this brand new drop shirt yes. and it, and it's great. Um, who's the name of the artist that did that? It's Chris Rhodes. Chris Rhodes. Okay. So yeah. So longtime friend of mine, uh, old school, no regrets member, like OG Inland Empire. We both went to the same high school. Mm. Um, yeah. So we didn't know each other in high school. He's, a, I think he's a little younger than I am, or right around the same age, but maybe a little. Anyways, and um, yeah, and he just started doing art. Like he's done a couple of. Uh, he's done at least one, two of my grinder shirts. Mm -hmm. now. Which was the uh, the tan shirt with the dots on it. That's one of them. Yep. And then, do you remember the OP looking shirt? It said Grinder TV, and it had like a, like a brown, like a gold, like guitar pick looking figure on it, kind of. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I do. Oh yeah, yeah. It, OP. What do you mean, like Ocean Pacific? Yeah. Remember those shirts? Yeah. Like, that, for some reason, that design reminded me of Ocean Pacific. It reminded me more of like a fifties, like diner? diner vibe. Yeah, I didn't get yeah. Ocean Pacific because Ocean Pacific. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know where you. I got, got Ocean. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's what I used to wear when I was a kid was Ocean Pacific. Uh -huh. So as soon as I saw that, yeah. I was like, that's the vibe that I got. Interesting. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, that was yeah, really great. He's great. Big thank you to him for, for putting that together for us. I was going to. Oh, yeah. So it's CR underscore underscore DZ is his Instagram name. Cool. Awesome. We should. I'll follow him back. <laughs> Whoops. Maybe I should do the same. <laughs> I have fun followed on the Grinder TV, but just not the drop. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's really exciting. Again, we'll get into all that next week. But this week, okay, so since we last spoke, it's been kind of interesting since we last spoke because you were here. Uh, we did the RCC thing. We talked all about that on the last uh, you and I episode. We yeah. had uh, Doug's episode. And then that same week you were here, we recorded with Doug. That was a great episode. I really enjoyed that it, one. One of my favorites, I would say. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of other people have messaged the page and made comments. And I noticed, yeah. Yeah. I definitely noticed. I'm, I'm super stoked about it. Me too. I'm glad we did it. And it was, the funny part is the second we stopped recording, we remembered so many more things. I know. That's always the way it goes. But we'll we'll yeah. pick that up again. Just like, we'll, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll have him on again. You know, I'm sure he has a lot. And he lives right by you. So I it'll know. be one of those things where <laughs> like, so funny. if I'm coming into town, we'll just have Doug as a special guest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just come drop in some Doug thoughts. <laughs> thoughts with Doug. <laughs> yes. Which are usually like the opposite of our thoughts. Yeah. So it really, it's well, really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mr. Cream Pie. How do you like I that? Know, your, dude, your I know. Oh, thing. my God. Dude. Jeez. Well, There's and been. this is this is the very nice thing to talk about on Christmas morning when all when you're watching the drop on TV and all yeah. your kids are opening presents and we're just going to get into my Freudian slip, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Um, 
Doug, we, I talked to Doug on the phone the other day and he goes, you know, when it was happening, he goes, Frank didn't get it. And then it took me a second to figure it out. But Doug instantly like picked up on this and then mm-hmm. I got, and then it took you like a little longer to get it. It too, always takes me like, a very long time. Cause you may like, there has been things in the past where you like say something and I don't get it. And I just gloss over it and just move on. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I'm reviewing the episode, I go, Oh, oh. that's what he's, that's what he's talking about. I got that one pretty quickly though. And I that want to apologize because that was very crude. But I, but you know what? To be fair, to be fair, I never said cream. I was only referring to chocolate and vanilla. I never uh, used the phrase cream. Doug came up with that one. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, geez, Louise. Anyways, getting a little. I think you should put there. That's definitely gonna have to be like part of a T-shirt in the future. <laughs> just, just me holding a pie. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Oh, okay. I, that's one um, thing. Now, you know, I, we might as well just get into it, but we're gonna save it. We're gonna try to save it for next week. But there's, I've kind of like went all in on something, but we'll get into that next week. Speaking of that, that's a good prelude to it. But I've kind of went not all in, but I really leaned into it. But anyway, next week. Uh, okay. Anyway, um, well, oh, the drop T-shirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's a pre-order right now. So go on the grinder. There's a li- there will be a link on the grinder TV website. Click shirts, mm-hmm. and uh, you'll be able to pre-order there. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, are we still? I, I forgot. Are we still doing double points for those? Um, we usually do it like like when we get close when we get closer to the thing. Yeah, but we're probably not on this one. Let's just say no because if we say yes, people, then people will, wait. will wait. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so makes no. Sense. Okay. No. No double points. No double points for the Accuary level kit that we're giving away. Yeah. Um. So that was the Doug episode. It was great. Oh, yeah. So I enjoyed uh, it. Yep. And then since it's Christmas, uh-huh. since today is Christmas or this week of Christmas. We can talk about the Christmas party that right. I didn't go to. Which I have, I have my present here. The, who now? Who did that? Joey. Uh, oh, Uncle, jo- Uncle Joey. Uncle yeah. Joey did that. And um, what it is is it's uh, a piece of plywood. And well, let me pull it out again. So, oh shoot. Oh, I, okay. Uh, piece of plywood, and it's actually miter. I don't know if that's the correct term, but it's like miter to where it's like cut out. And yeah. then uh, a, a CNC machine or something cut out the letters and then emboss them into the into the piece of plywood here. Oh, okay. Because it yeah. looks like from here, it looks like a piece of wood that was torched and then engraved. Yes, uh, stained. So it's, it's stained. two types of stain. Um, the, the, there's a dark stain and then the letters are each individually cut and then stained and then glued into place. Um, yeah, it's great. I, I'm really happy with it. Um, we yeah so well we'll get to you not being there in a second but uh well the the first thing is was was funny is because in the, our last in person episode we were talking about our gifts and about mine the chess set and you're like oh my god that's really cool that wasn't even the top five yeah and yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the whole thing that wasn't even, that didn't even I don't even think uh, to be honest with you I don't think it broke the top ten because yeah. <laughs> you always know when gifts are like. And, and and I say this all in a little bit of jest, you know, and not talking crap about anybody or the, anything. It's just I'm just saying this in jest where uh, you know that it's not very popular when someone's all, hey, how about a chess set? Meanwhile, there are fully painted mailboxes <laughs> yeah. and panels and just the craziest stuff being flying around. And, and Ro, Ro had it and he's like, anybody want a chess set? <laughs> Your chess set was the new uh boobs yeah my chest like set was it was the, your chest set was the new <laughs> bottle of of wine yeah. that someone brought on the, thanks donald thanks yeah, donald. i know i know and i was so and, and donald did a great job i'm really I, i'm really stoked about well, for, it when i saw the chest set i got excited because when i every time i would go uh rent an airbnb there would be like a checkerboard setup uh-huh. and i never thought of that as like a decoration but in like oh, a yeah. room in like a room that um because a lot of houses have like a family room and a living room or whatever. And I don't know what the family room is the one with no TV, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. So like you could set up like yeah, next this... to a bookshelf on a little table, the little chess set. Yeah. And you would look sophisticated because that's exactly, a sophisticated yeah. game. And it's, and it's custom. No one else has it. Yeah. But no yeah. one wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably because no one knows how to play chess in our club. Mm, well, no, the, uh, um, uh, little Brian's kid and, and, uh, there was oh and um George's kid were were really into it. They were actually playing the game. Really? Yeah. It was kind of huh. interesting. That's awesome. But it was cool. Like I said, uh we'll we'll put up a photo right here because we took a photo of all of the gifts that were yeah. available. It was insane. Like, 
you know, uh, it, it definitely set out to do what we wanted to do, which was create this like this crazy gift exchange. It's, and it's that and this is the, since this is the first year of it, it's only going to get better. I know. And now that people see because there was a lot of people hitting me up and even me, I'm like, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, my default was a skateboard with the logo on it mm -hmm. and, and, you know, engraved and like or lasered on there. And I'm like. That's such a simple gift. And I so when you see all the other stuff. So now everyone's seeing, getting ideas, and they're just going to take that back and just to put a twist on them. Yeah. Do what, like, I already kind of know what my gift next year is when I Me don't too. show up. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I have such a cool idea. It's a bit, it's, it's, I'm going to prelude it with this and we'll, we'll hit this back in a year. It's, it's slightly illegal. Illegal? It's slightly illegal. Okay. But it's going to be so cool. <laughs> nice. But but you didn't show up. Which I was... didn't. My that was and this was all on me. I could have shown up mm -hmm. and I sat at my house all day Saturday. It was like poor planning on my part um and a couple of other other things, but mm -hmm. I could have gone and I was sitting here at home on Saturday and I was like I just didn't want to drive. Yeah, I, oh, was, no, I mean, hey, that's a that's a far drive to drive 4 hours one way. Yeah, for an and evening. so I was like, but back and forth. And then um, it's one of those things. Do you remember, I don't know if you ever have done this, but like if you have to be up early the next morning and you're partying the night before and you're like, okay, it's it's 10. I'm going to be home by 11. Yeah, and then okay. 11 comes around and you're like, okay. And then you're counting the hours you could sleep. You're yep. like, I used to do this when I when I had a real job. I'd be like, okay, I have to be up at 7.30 in the morning. If I get home at one in the morning, that gives me this many hours. And I'm doing math. Yeah. And then it gets later and later and I'm like, yeah, I'll be fine with four hours of sleep. And then like, and that was me sitting on the, on the chair here. I was like, okay, if I leave now, I could be there this time. And I was like, nah. Hmm. And then like an hour later, I was like, okay, if I leave now, and I was just like, nah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, then, I get it. It's, it's a, it's, it was a mission. I was kind of half expecting you just to pop in, but it worked. It's, it was fine. You know? Yeah. It's, it's all good. I know. It, it's all good. It's, uh, yeah, it sucked for sure. But it was cool to see that the plan worked and that everyone had a good time. Yeah, it was a lot of fun stuff. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, what, just some notable moments. Yeah, the, the gift exchange was great. Seeing everybody was great. Uh, Robbie is just always such a, a great host. You know, he really opens up his house and has everybody yeah. over and the food is good. And yeah, it was just all around great thing. What was the uh, the gift that stuck out the most to you? Oh, man, that's hard. Like It's probably going to be different for each person. But yeah. Like, um, I mean, obviously all the painted stuff, which now Danny, Danny's going to be a very busy man. <laughs> I know right? you, <laughs> you guys, you guys, if for people in our club listening, there are other painters besides Danny, right? I'm not saying, not saying that we don't want everyone to get to have Danny paint their stuff, right? But, but I'm sure Dan, by the, the 12th thing that comes through Danny's, you know, yeah. desk is like, Okay, you know. Yeah. Um. Oh, one notable one that sticks out in my mind, which was actually really cool, is like, yeah, Danny painted the. Uh, I I don't actually don't want to say what he painted because I don't want to get it wrong. But, um, Georgie and uh, Nancy came down, yeah, and they found um, they found an artist in L.A. who is a pinstriper, and uh, they had they commissioned this this person. It, it was a girl, I believe, and I don't know her name. Um, you know, George could pop down the comments and and drop who the name. Um, but they commissioned this, this lady to do a panel and it was really cool. It was all done in pinstriping and silver leaf. And it was the triple F's. Uh, that was really cool because like it stood out one because it was done really nicely and done. Um, and it was a really cool gift, but also that they kind of went out there and, and yeah. saw and found yeah. someone and it was like, oh, okay, this is cool. I'm going to go pursue this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, roulette had a neon logo made. Oh, that's right. I see. I totally forgot about that. I know. <laughs> I mean, come on <laughs> now. Now the chess set. No, I, <laughs> I was going to say, what was the worst gift? No, I'm just kidding. Don't say that. No, don't say that. <laughs> um, rip these out of my ear right now. Yeah. Um, um, no, yeah. Uh, roulette, uh, uh, commissioned, um, Jap from freaks who is, he does a lot of like different, interesting branding things. And he came up with a neon, a full forbidden fantasy logo done in neon lights, which our logo is probably not the easiest to do that with. Yeah, you're right. It's not. And, uh, but it was done really well. I mean, it looked, exactly, it, was, it was super cool. It looked exactly like it. So, I mean, there was I have that. A, I'm hoping our, uh, I'll have to tell you in the post podcast, then we can talk about it next week. Okay. 
it just clicked on something that reminded me. So remind, I'm going to write my note. Let's yeah, see. write that down. Post pod. Pod for everyone listening. We do have a post podcast where we talk about things we cannot on here. We don't record it. <laughs> we should, and then <laughs> when no, we should not. No, we should not. Well, we've always said that that just we're gonna we're gonna make these like secret uh, recordings, and then when everything just hits the fan, we're just gonna release everything. And you know, then, we have we have uh, hinted around to me and you have talked about the pay, whole Patreon thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and and figuring out how to um, monetize this podcast and use the monetization to travel more to create more podcasts um, to create more podcasts with different guests and stuff like mm-hmm. that um but we we could just use the post pod that'll be the patreon <laughs> it'd be two episodes uh, yeah <laughs> they would only be like five minutes long yeah i know but they would be we full would be, of really good stuff people would be like nope those guys are done yep exactly um other notable gifts uh Little Brian's toolboxes were amazing because you knew you you kind of had an in on that. Oh, that was such a that was rough because I have a toolbox here mm-hmm. uh, that he so he bought a toolbox sent it to my house so I could measure the stickers and then I was going to have the stickers made and put them on there and bring the toolbox out mm-hmm. and then we ended up having some he ended up he found an artist to recreate the stickers because we didn't weren't sure if Brandon can do it in time. Oh, Bra- that, that wasn't Brandon. Someone else did that. No, oh, someone else did that because that artwork wasn't made in layers. Oh, that artwork is one drawing. Mm-hmm. So uh, you can't just cut those out because they're, they're uh, weird angles. Yeah. So he, he actually found a dude to recreate those. Wow. He didn't tell me yeah. that. Yeah. And, um, and then, yeah. And then he was like, Hey man, are you already in town? This was Saturday at like, one and I go oh, of the, oh I'm not the going day and he goes and he goes you're cr- you're shitting me and I go why and he goes the toolbox you have the toolbox I had the toolbox yeah I, I remember that gift. Yeah, I remember that it was in the back seat I could have just left it with you when I left oh. but I didn't think about it and but I also thought he ordered another toolbox because he was like I'll just buy another toolbox and then just bring me that one when you come out mm-hmm. but I guess the toolbox that he that Eunice his wife ordered was a black one that's how that so I was wondering how there ended up being two two toolboxes. Yeah. yeah. So he had to go that day at the last minute to find a red toolbox wow. because I didn't because I'm a jerk. And uh mm. yeah. So he pulled it off really well because uh let me let's describe what exactly what's going on here. So he so our 30 year Forbidden Fantasy 30 year artwork and we've showed this before it's a toolbox and it has all the chapters of Forbidden Fantasy and different stickers all over this toolbox. So he re- recreated those stickers and then put them on a toolbox to look exactly like the 30 artwork, which was I that didn't even like th- th- it's so cool to see what how other people's brains work when it comes to mm-hmm. thinking of gifts. I'm the worst like this Christmas for Chelsea is going to be terrible. Uh Oh, yeah, <laughs> but it's fine. I'm, uh, to be fair. I'm really I'm really bad, too. I I'm real bad most of the time. But when I'm good, I'm good. So oh. like there I'll just be sitting there. Something will click and I'll be like, oh, but mm-hmm. I, it's like when I'm trying to think of it, I can't think of anything. But same, we're doing I'm our backyard. We're doing our. I'm doing the backyard for Christmas. So that's. Oh, that's it. I uh, Angie's Angie's not here. This is coming out Christmas morning. Okay, so I got Angie. We're we're doing some home improvements and we're building this like it's called a pergola. I guess. Yeah. It's like a patio cover yeah. basically. So yeah, I'm like we we well she already knows that's happening because that's already being put together. But I'm buying her stuff for that. So I bought her these lights and. You know stuff like that. Heck but, yeah, but yeah, but it, it it is hard sometimes. Well, it is hard. Last year we to, went to, to New York. That it. was our Christmas gift to ourselves. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So this year we we're like, what do we do? And then fi- then I had this good bright idea to completely redo the backyard by my like <laughs> on my own. You you're 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 out there. You've been sending updates. You're out there putting in the oh, work. It's <laughs> yeah. I've been ex. Let's just say I've been excavating. Excavating. Been excavating yes. is done. I had some guys come over and take all the dirt away. Oh, cool. And did you give it to, to Brianne like she wanted? No, I did not. Sorry, Brianne. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know if you're listening. Well, I thought, I don't know, that's way, like, way deep cuts or whatever, but if someone just came up and dropped off a bunch of dirt in my driveway, I'd be like, I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> so now we get to um, have all the rock and stuff that needs to be laid back down to be delivered soon. So that's what I'll be working on next. Cool. But I am time-lapsing this whole thing. So when Oh, it's, you are? When it's all that's done. Awesome. I'm gonna put. I'll put a little time lapse together and show everyone what I did. That's awesome because I need to That's make really sure cool. it's gonna come out. I told the guy that came to pick the dirt up because he's the one that gave me the quote 
for originally for the backyard mm-hmm. when he came over and, and took all the dead grass away. And I was like, oh, that quotes. That's, I'm just going to do this by myself. Mm-hmm. So when he came to me, he was like, oh, you want me to this? And I go, nah. I said, I, lo- I watched YouTube. I, I could figure I figured it out. <laughs> and I was like, I'll call you when I need to fix it. Uh-huh. That's funny. <laughs> he just laughed. Were you uh, were you digging it and you're like, man, I wish I had Frank's Kubota. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I know. I was like, I'm gonna go get the tra- the tractor, dude, to bring the tractor out. When that see, we we again, we sometimes we short have some shortcomings on stuff. That would be great if I trailered my tractor all the way out there oh. to help you do that. That's yeah. Kubota content. People people want the Kubota content. This is our problem. Okay, uh-huh. yes. we have these YouTube channels that we don't put those that kind of stuff on. Like if we're, we were, we're so, if we were smart, I would have called you and been like, Frank, load the Kubota up, bring it to my house to do this because that would have been such good content. I know but we don't do that. Why don't we do? Why don't we do that? We're standing in our own way. Most of the time we're trying to get out of there that way. Yeah, we're trying. We're trying. We're working on and it. And again, next week we're going to get into the mud about it because I, I'm ready. Yeah, we're, we're bursting. We're bursting. Yeah, I guess. Yes. I don't know that or I want to say it. But um, anyway, uh, what man. else is going on? Oh, my that Tacoma's back at Pandas. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really cool. I uh, that So I went to, I had to load it up. I, I put a new airbag in my Titan because it got the load bag got a hole in it. And um, Joe called me, Joe, C10 Vato Joe. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And this was on Sunday. And he was like, hey, man, my transmission went out in my Suburban. You feel like taking a road trip? So I went out there and grabbed his suburban form and I was supposed to load my Tacoma up and I had the help of my neighbors. I was like, had two of my neighbors. I was like, they're like, yeah, we can do it in the next hour. But after that, we're leaving out of town for like a week or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, cool. Well then Joe called me. And so I didn't have the help of the neighbors the next day. So I, but I did get the Tacoma on the trailer in just a, in a creative way. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Just describe the creative way. Cause it was pretty creative. <laughs> well, see, I watched a, a channel called Matt's off road recovery. It's the greatest it is. And so I'm basically like a pro- professional, uh, uh Reco- recovery recover-er. person. <laughs> yeah. Recover. Er. So I was like, I've seen them pull so many like dead vehicles on their trailer with another vehicle. So uh-huh. I took my Titan angled into the driveway where the trailer's in the street with the Tacoma behind it hooked up a, uh, a strap to the Tacoma to the Maverick and had Chelsea pull the Tacoma on with the Maverick. That's awesome. Yeah. And it, it worked perfect. And it worked in my, I recorded it. So I have it on, I put a video, I put a camera across the street and record it because I was like, if this goes wrong, <laughs> I need it to be on video. Yes, definitely. <laughs> right. Um, and even if it goes right, it's still kind of, it's cool. Content it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting content. So mm-hmm. everything went fine. That's great. Yeah. That's cool. Um, in my head, though, I was picturing this thing going just over the front, over trailer, front dude. Just because I was just like, because the, the the Maverick's weird, right? Since it's a hybrid, when you let off of the gas or off the brake, there's a delay. There's like a two mm-hmm. second delay before it starts to quote unquote idle forward because mm-hmm. the, there's no gas engine on. So you tend to let off the brake and then want to, and it's, you're like, oh, it's not moving, and you hit the gas. Right, I, and I remember that from the trip we took out uh, to yeah. Mini Nats with it. Yeah, it, it took a long time to get used to, actually. Yeah, and Chelsea doesn't drive the Maverick ever, so I was oh. like, okay, I was like, okay, when you let the gas off or let the brake off, don't touch the gas. Mm-hmm. Let it, let it go, and yeah, it just kind of it just pulled it right up. That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. So that's back at Panda. So it, what's he doing? He's finishing the floor and the firewall and everything like yes. that. There's uh, there will be a video out on it probably. I would say just after the new year, because he he said he wants to get it all knocked out before the first of the year. So really, wow, yeah. So he's got yeah he's got to do some steering um, stuff on it, uh, firewall, and finish the floor, finish the back wall, finish the bed, met the sheet metal on the bed, uh, make like a door that opens up. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, you're you're gonna make it? I thought you're leaving that open. Mm-mm. No, no, you're making that closed. Open. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and then fuel cell seats and oh and we're taking the cab off and the bed off and everything and painting the frame oh cool yeah so by the time it it, he's done with it it's going to be a a a roller like ready to to start making it run yeah the next step will be it running so the next step will be to come back here and i'm sure tanner's listening to this and Mm -hmm. did you see his post when he was uh his story did you see that that post he put he was uh 
working in his garage and he's like you, you, the, our podcast is on in the background oh yeah yeah I, I do remember but i don't go, go ahead refresh my and memory he's, and he's working and then you just hear me talking just like this yeah and then it's gonna go to tanner's and then he's like what <laughs> he's wait like, a oh. minute <laughs> oh, i do remember that yes because yeah. there actually that. might be things in my head that I think about that people are going to do for this Tacoma mm-hmm. or on this Tacoma that I have not talked to them about. Right, right. Because you've yeah. already kind of made it up in your mind. I've like, already oh, yeah, made it up in my head. I'm just, and I'm just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. That's funny. That's cool. And then what? And then so, you know, uh, I don't know if you want to get too far ahead of yourself, but you're saying that you're bringing it back out to SoCal to go back to Allen? Yes. Oh, okay. So, yeah, to get it painted. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, wow. Man, this is yeah. like moving it's, at a oh, swift it's, pace. It's, it's very fast. I mean, wow. there's not much to it. Like, mm-hmm. th- here's the thing. I'm Like, even Panda was just like, holy crap. Like, he's looking at this truck and he goes, this thing's not the same truck that left here. And even when it, like, he goes, it's Oh, because he hasn't seen it since it he get, didn't get, see oh, it in, right, yeah. in person. And he mm-hmm. goes, this is crazy. Yeah. And I go, yeah. It's <laughs> the, you guys, between Panda and and Alan, like, the, the amount of work that was done was so, it was just crazy. So, yeah, that's really awesome. Um, yeah, and the, and the other part about it is I'm not making it a show truck. Mm-hmm. So if I, this was a show truck, it would be moving at a much slower pace. Right. Just because th- like there would be more thought process put into a lot of things. Mm-hmm. So. And then so like in that in that way, you were like when you paint the frame, you're just painting everything black, nothing, yeah. nothing crazy. Yeah, like if it was a show truck, I would pop the cabin bed off, pull the motor out. Mm-hmm. sand out like grind down a lot of you know certain things and i don't know and powder coat stuff and mm-hmm. and in contrast color link bars just stuff like that's that, what happened maybe. to my mine was sort of by accident because like as it was being built not accident but when it was being built he's like um well what do you want to do about all the link bars and stuff i was like well i don't know. I, I was just, i thought the same thing it's like oh where'd you go are you there you there am i here am i here yeah you're there now i don't know what happened I was I saw you and could hear you like normal. Really? Uh, but no, yeah. but you're, you're said reconnecting. I don't know. Now the, the kids just walked in the house and they probably just turned on everything and just everything. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> 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 the lights in the house just dims on. <laughs> 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 oh, but, um, oh, man. Um, yeah, but, you know, the, the, actually, now that I think about it, we might contrast it like the link bars or whatever because the powder coater guy is literally in the same neighborhood as as pandas so i might do that but. yeah oh i was saying mine just was sort of like he's like well you got it all off anyway and it, it's not much more to to powder coat in black or powder coat in a different color so let's yeah. do them silver so that now i have silver link bars and silver suspension yeah. underneath the, the truck huh which yeah that might be not a bad idea yeah. but whatever well, well yeah you cross that bridge when you come to it i yeah. i'm still having an having an interesting time with my truck yeah so my my saga continues. Oh, you uh, haven't. It hasn't gone to the mechanic yet. Has it has it? not gone to the mechanic. I talked to my mechanic yesterday. Yeah. So I want to talk about this in a very honest way. And in, I'm in no way talking down about anybody or saying that I'm upset about anything or uh, like, you know how it tends to get in, in our scene when we start talking about things that don't necessarily go right with our builds. Mm. And then all of a sudden it's like attacking the builders or attacking. You know what I mean? I'm. I'm I'm laying this down in the beginning saying it's none of that. It's simply just what has happened so far. Yeah. Um so I took it uh the the last I don't know the last time we so let me catch everybody up to speed. Earlier this year, uh Tim and Devin over at Bio um they fixed the gas tank cuz it was cracked. So when they fixed the gas tank, they also relocated a uh a ga- the gas filler because it was a bit different different configuration which wasn't working necessarily how it should. So they reconfigured it to work better. Um, again, I don't drive the truck that much, so it sits a lot of the time. So I didn't have yeah. too many opportunities to put gas in it, to test it. So when I first got it back, it didn't have much gas in it. So I filled it up, filled up fine. I took it on a few trips here and there, ran it down to empty, filled it back up. It was fine. Well, when I took it up to the 30 year to the uh, Chubb show, the day to remember show, um, it only it didn't use so much gas going up there. So I filled it, had a half a tank in it. I could not get gas in this thing. It just kept dumping it out, dumping it out. So I call the guys up, you know, explain what happened. They're like, okay, it sounds like a venting issue, which it was. Um, so they, you know, d- uh, changed the vent on it and everything like that. Well, unfortunately, with a lot of the taking it apart and putting it back together and taking it apart, and putting it back together, it started not running right. Like it's actually not running well at all. <laughs> um, they tried to figure it out the best that they could figure it out. And this is where I don't want, I'm not like talking bad about them. It's just 
circumstance. Like sometimes you have like they're they're very 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 good fabricators. They will build you literally anything that your heart desires or what you would know. But you know they're not mechanics, so to speak. You know. So this um, it's I see this all the time at the shops that I work at. Um, there are I'll give you an example. Tray five. If you they like to build stuff from the ground up. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't. They have in the past, and and I'm not speaking for them, but this is just what I've seen. They don't like when you bring stuff to, like if you brought a truck and you're like, oh, here's my brake parts or here's my this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They kind of like to because they know what works, what doesn't, mm-hmm. and all this stuff. And then I've been to shops where they're having trouble. That like a shop will bag a truck and then it's not running right and then the owner of that truck will blame the shop for it not running right because yes. because but it has nothing to do with yeah they might have taken something off or putting something back on but when it comes down to it like like what you what happened with your truck it might not it's not necessarily their fault it could just be a, it, like it's an old truck for one yes and that's and what it, yeah okay i'm sorry i don't mean to keep cutting yeah. off but go ahead no no but that's like I see it quite a bit, you know, like, um, like how you were saying, I don't want to blame anyone. I don't want to do this. And and that's good to like, for people to realize is mm-hmm. if you do take your truck somewhere to get something done and something else happens to it, it's really, you know what I mean? You, it's not the shop's fault per se. Exactly. The and that's the yeah. situation that I'm in. It's not their fault because like, um, f- to a really kind of thing that happened is, is like they're, they were putting it together and they're like, Hey, by the way, this truck doesn't have a fuel filter on it. I was like, oh, that's weird because they were like thought maybe because it's basically the truck's not getting fuel like it's not getting fuel. It's not holding pressure in the line, which through talking to Eric and a couple other people, we figured out that, yeah, the, the pressure's just bleeding back into the tank. And so they're trying to figure it out and they they were going to change a fuel filter just to see if that was a thing. And they called me and they said, hey, this thing doesn't have a fuel filter. I'm like, oh, that's really weird. Like maybe the maybe when it was built before maybe they didn't put a fuel filter in there and they said do you want us to put a fuel filter in it I said okay yeah cool an inline fuel filter so they put that in uh, so i got it home and again it was not running like i mean you used to like just hit the key and it'll start so uh, i took it i talked to my mechanic yesterday who is a mechanic he's a toyota mechanic and like i take everything to this guy and he was like oh yeah well those forerunners don't have an inline filter the filter's actually in the tank with the with the with the fuel pump and so mm. basically what's happening is is um there's a, a basically a check valve in the fuel pump and it's that check valve is just letting the pressure come back into the tank mm. oh, okay so that's that's the issue with it but like i said those guys they're not toyota mechanics how would they know that you know they're, it's not like they're working on these things all the time so to them Some, yeah um if you're working with fuel cells and stuff like that, it's probably not a bad thing to learn that Mm -hmm. because if you are taking things in and taking things out, yeah, you're a builder, but at the same time, if you're working and someone says, Hey, can you build me a fuel cell? Probably not a bad idea to know those things though. But also to be fair to your point, saying that like they didn't build this fuel cell they didn't no no exactly so yeah, they're exactly. they're just they're just working with what they got yeah you know yeah. and so yeah and and but again, you as a but you as an understanding customer knows that mm-hmm. imagine an ununderstanding customer yeah definitely that's where and that's I can where the that's where these things come into play and as a as a shop you you also have to know the your client base like Tim and you are are and and you guys are fr- not friends but you're friends yeah yeah so you can talk about these things or he can be like hey I'm doing this to kind of help you out too mm-hmm. but like me if I was in a position like that and it and it was someone I didn't know mm-hmm. I would refuse to do it I see what you're saying yeah you see what I'm saying uh-huh. because all that does now me does to me as a shop owner is open me up mm-hmm. for fixing that person's truck now. Exactly. And you can see, like I started this conversation with saying that, like how what a prevalent problem this is within our scene about people placing blame on other people and getting upset. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're talking bad about this person. You can see how quickly that can happen and how easily that could happen. Oh, big time, big time, especially when you're not talking about it in person. You're you're doing it on social media. Like it makes it even worse. (laughs) Yeah. Like imagine if you were like, got my truck back from bio and then the next day you're like. Truck's not running right. Got to take it to the mechanic. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, got my truck back from bio for uh, they fixed my fuel cell. And then the next day you're like taking my truck to the mechanic. 
because it's the it's not getting fuel. Mm-hmm. Well, the viewer of that Facebook post is going to put two and two together, and then it just creates this shit storm. Yeah, of comments and stuff. And this yeah. is why people shouldn't be on Facebook at all, anyways. Yeah, Paul, that, <laughs> that's true too. But I think it's I think it's a good conversation to have because the more we like take out the the stigma, so to speak, about talking mm-hmm. about this stuff and being more open and honest, because we talk about like a, we talk a lot. One of the, uh, amongst many other things, one of the things we talk about on this podcast is like people ask us, how do I go about building a truck? How do I go yeah. about doing this? So this is actually a really th- important thing to explore because if you are embarking on this process, you have to know that these type of things may happen and you know how you have to how, know how to accept it and move through it, you know? And understand things are coincidental sometimes. And, and that's the fact with this truck. Like the truck is 30 years old. <laughs> Like yeah. things are going to break on it. You know and what I mean? You don't drive it a lot. I when don't you drive don't, a lot. Yeah. And when you, so when you don't drive something, things like fuel, you, you will have fuel issues. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you know and that um, was the thing. Cause like they, uh, you know, they, when, when Devin called me and he's like, Hey, you know, I think this thing needs a fuel pump. You just go, Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes yeah. perfect sense. You know? Yeah. And you or just a battery and, or a something, whatever. Yeah. 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 So yeah, definitely like you have, uh, you, if you're going to be doing the things that we do and especially it's, if you think about it, like what we do is pretty insane. Like, especially like look at your Tacoma, what you started with. You've built a truck from literally nothing, <laughs> you know? which I'm going to be going through these motions soon mm-hmm. um, because, because you got to get it running. Yeah. Yeah. Building the structure is one thing getting, making the truck going up and down and turn left and right is one thing. Now making it mechanically work, from even when I got it from New Mexico, mm-hmm. when I got it back, um, even when I sold it, it had it ran and moved under really its own power. Yeah, I know. Um, and I don't know how long. And then when I got it back, it ran. It drove onto the trailer, but it was um, it was having air fuel issues. So I'm pretty sure it was the mass airflow sensor, something simple right. like that. Because, but now the entire firewall has been cut out. Um, We've messed break. with every, literally every single aspect that makes this truck a truck. Exactly. Has been messed uh, with. Yeah. So <laughs> the the brakes are interesting. I'm going through trying to figure out the brake stuff right now because there mm-hmm. is no, there won't be a master cylinder or it won't be a brake booster on it. So like, yeah. So I'm talking to a bunch of different people trying to figure it out. So it's going to be like going through the motions when the first time it gets power yeah. to the first time it starts to, it's going to have a fuel cell in it. So mm-hmm. what like. All these things and, and chasing out all the little problems and yeah, it's just part of the process. We can't yeah. uh, again, we can't take these trucks down to literally nothing and rebuild them and not and, and expect them to act exactly how we expect them to act. You know, I, what mean, I mean, even when you don't, even when you don't do anything to a vehicle, if it sits for a long time, mm-hmm. the oil goes bad, the gas goes <laughs> bad, a whole bunch r- of things, r- uh, lines rot, uh, mm-hmm. whatever. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's definitely like a, a very interesting topic, and we can get into that. I think. Maybe when we start to interview some shop uh, owners. Yeah, it'd be definitely to, to see from their perspective. Yeah. You know, because yeah, like I said, we've been plagued for a long, long time with all this miscommunication and this uh, different expectations. And, mm-hmm. and and we said like before, when you're building these trucks, like one of the most important things is communication. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and that's one thing that that Devin specifically from bio is a master at. He, he, t- he walks, he explains everything that's going on. He doesn't leave anything to like, doesn't say, you know what I mean? It's just that communication. Mm-hmm. The m- communication is so important. Mm-hmm. And yeah, then there's, go, de- okay. there's so many, there's so many part pieces to that puzzle. Mm-hmm. Um, and it will be interesting to talk to, um, cause when you come out here, we want to, I wanted to interview Panda mm-hmm. and I'd like to interview, there's a couple different shop owners out here, Jeremy. Yeah. Um, and these and these shops are they're all doing the same thing, but they're all they do things differently. So it will it is going to be very interesting to like dig deep into that. Like I said, like when we talked to Panda, like what kind of client base does he like? What mm-hmm. kind of stuff does he like it, working on? You know, in my Tacoma video where he said I like working on mini trucks and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we were talking, he goes, "Man, Carl's Dooley's so big. I just like I like working on mini trucks." But now when I went back, he goes, "I want to work on more Dooleys." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then he's going to pick up a C10 uh, next week. And he goes, this is the like kind of clients that I want like this. Cause so that, maybe it's not so much the type of vehicle. Like you said, it's, it's the, the type, type of, of client. person. Yeah. It's a type of client. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Because regardless, and we've said this from the beginning, it doesn't matter if you're building a mini truck or a C10 or a 57 Chevy. It doesn't matter what it is. They all have the same thing. They all have four wheels, brakes, a frame, a motor, Mm -hmm. electronics. So the the cost, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's all the same thing. So, um, yeah, it's definitely a big, like on the actual client. Yeah, definitely a, a topic to keep on you know, digging into and talking about. And like I said, I kind of want to, I hope that like these conversations and and these talks and people listening and the shops listening and everybody kind of like listening, I I said that a lot, Uh, but we could take, I want to take away the stigma. I want to take away the stigma of, 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 uh, you know, yeah. Of, of people getting upset or people getting the wrong idea. You know what I mean? Yeah. So anyway, but yeah, so that's that, that's your, your, Tacoma, my forerunner. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited. I'm hoping to be out there sometime in January. You're going to come out here and drop it off, right? Yeah. And then I was thinking, I'm like, oh, when I drop it off, like I like to use the trips now to do multiple things, yeah. you know? Um, and I think that stems from where I live right now because like, I can't just pop down to the grocery store. That's true. Your your whole like kind of mentality on, on moving through your life has changed, huh? Yeah. 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 So I'm like, okay, if I, cause I go to the grocery store, come home. I can't just, I don't want to pop back down to ACE hardware. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I got to like do multiple things while I'm out. Yeah. So like, uh, um, I do that now going like, okay, I'm going to go out to drop my Tacoma off and then maybe spend the night at Frank's like film, at Allen's for a little bit, spend the night at Frank's and I'm like, Oh, then we should record a couple podcasts. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, Oh, uh, Joe's truck still up at Danny's getting painted. So I hit up Danny. I'm like, Hey, is that thing going to be done? Oh, okay. I could pick it up. I'm going to have an empty trailer coming home. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm like, Oh, and then I can shoot Danny's truck for the magazine. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And then it turned, and then I screw myself. And then it turns into one of the, that trip that I went on when we recorded a, those three podcasts in a day. Oh and yeah. I mm-hmm. Did photo shoots up in central yeah. California and Northern California. You don't want to do too for a much. Week. Yeah, but then you're just like, don't want to leave nothing on the table That's either. true. Yeah, that's true. And actually, if you really want to get in the weeds about it, if you're coming out here to drop the truck off at Allen's, then to go to Danny's, you're already, and you're coming here to my house, and you're already headed to SenCal, we might as well hit up the twins and do something with them or do something with Danny or like... <laughs> Oh, man. We'll figure all that out. <laughs> we will. Yeah. That's how my brain works now. Yeah. No, I get it's it. It's like, it's, it's a time thing. It's like, it's like my brain now works on time. No, for sure. Well, time is the most valuable commodity. It is. Mm-hmm. It Money's is, money. Definitely. Yeah, whatever. We'll figure that out. But time, you don't have, you have finite time. You can make yeah. infinite money, but you can only have finite time. Yes. Mm-hmm. We need to make a t-shirt that has like relates to time. Yeah, but I don't want to get a, it sounds so, uh, you know, you know, know how but like <laughs> not relates to time, but like maybe one of the characters like that we're, you know, we'll get into this next week, mm-hmm. but we're very, uh, some of our, our upcoming artwork feet like, okay, yeah. we'll look at mine, yeah. my path. This most recent thing had characters on yeah. it, right? Imagine a character with like, what are those sand things called? Hourglasses. Yeah. So like this on my arm. Yeah. Oh, like Hey, father time, yeah, father time. Oh my like, gosh, it's all fitting together. It's all, it's it's all coming it's together. Oh so, man. <laughs> but like, yeah, not making cheesy shirts with sayings on it. Right? I get it. Yeah. Like, like we don't want to like turn into emo stuff, right. but at the or, same but time, I also, I don't want to turn into one of those, uh, motivational bros. Like I'm not, no. I'm not here to be that guy either. No, no, but you can be that guy without being that guy. That's true. Yeah. Like with the way that we have talked to each other about like getting off our asses a little bit more, mm-hmm being more proactive like that's different than sharing a meme yeah with oh that's the lamborghini that's it, true you with know a black and white photo with a guy fixing his watch i don't know why that's always the thing because <laughs> I, 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 yeah, yeah 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 um and then i was gonna go i was going somewhere with this and i totally missed about it. time 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 is a valuable commodity because also what i deal with too without getting into specifics of it is there's time suckers too People who just time thieves, time, time thieves. thieves. Yeah. Time suckers, time thieves who steal time yep. from you. And you're like, Ugh, and it just put you that's back. A, that's a good topic, too, because um, there are I communicate with quite a few people via social media, some mm-hmm. people on Instagram, some people on Facebook, some people on uh, on whatever. Right. Some people on text message and stuff. You know, people very rarely phone call like mm-hmm. talk on the phone anymore. Like 
Um, and there, there's probably two or three people that I talk on the phone to. And I know when that person calls, this is going to be a long conversation. Yeah. But at the same time, those people, if I don't answer the phone, I don't hear from them until I call them back because they know because they're busy that's, people too. Yeah, but that's different because I mean, those, even though, no, but I'm saying like, uh, but they understand oh, I see what not to steal time. Yeah. Yeah. Not to suck time mm-hmm. that they, they know that we all understand that we're busy and we're doing things and that if we get on the phone, it's going to suck time. Mm-hmm. So like you have to be cognizant of someone else's time, mm-hmm. you know, so you don't rob the time. Yeah. Yeah. I guess uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, definitely. I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's an interesting topic to explore. All these interesting topics to explore. So when you message Frank and he doesn't message you back, it's I'm doing something. I'm busy. <laughs> There's something going on. There's kids, work, life, dogs. I don't know, man. Everything. <laughs> And I'm just not very good at that, too, which is in for in next week's episode when we talk about the future in 2024. We'll talk about that, too. Oh, that's part of it. That's part of it. Yeah, because this right, is supposed to we, be uh, 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 a reflection. We're, we were supposed to reflect a little in this episode, too. About yeah, we things. were until we realized that we're having another episode that comes out. Oh, we're, oh that we're going to do reflection and. Yeah, be a reflection and, and a, inflection and a is inflection the opposite of reflection. If you're reflecting on something. You're looking past at it, but if you're inflecting on something, are you looking at it in the future? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Leave a comment below. Um, if well, yeah, we're going to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I can't believe it's going to be 2024. I can't believe we've done this podcast for almost two years now. Yeah. That's I was listening insane, to, dude. To, I was listening to Jason um, uh, Ballard, and he posts on, I think it's called Substack. I've heard of that. I don't know. I've heard of that, but I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is, but he sent a link. He posted a link and I clicked on it and I read it. And then me and him had a long conversation on the phone um, a couple weeks ago, just um, when I was on the road trip, actually coming to your house. And we were just talking about that. And then I was listening to his podcast the other day and he was saying like, they used to do it every week Mm -hmm. and they've been doing theirs for eight years now. Uh, Yes. I mean, that is, is, that's a marathon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then they went to biweekly. So I started thinking, I'm just like, to do this every week for a long, for the, for that many years mm-hmm. is very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> it gets difficult Not, sometimes. We luckily, we don't have full-time jobs. Mm-hmm. That's true. Um, well in the sense of a nine to five. Mm-hmm. So we're Cape. We're like, we have more, um, freedom to like do this during the day or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like we're not stuck doing it in the evening and, and all this stuff. But, um, just the simple fact of talking to someone, me and you talking to each other Mm -hmm. every week for an hour and making it interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it gets challenging. Sometimes it's really easy. Like today for a good example, like I was like, Oh, well I guess we can talk about these things, but like how much can we talk about? But here we are, you know, just moving right along an hour in. Yeah. Yeah. We're moving right along. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's difficult, but it's not that difficult. I don't know how to say it. Yeah. 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 Um, Actually, Carl is here in town and he just messaged me. Oh, I was going to say something coincidental earlier because we were, this is kind of going back earlier in the conversation. We we're talking about like you want to maximize the the most of your time traveling, doing all these things. A, a, a text message just came across the top of the screen from Angie saying like, when you go out to Arizona, can you do that during spring training? <laughs> I think that's too far ahead, though, because spring training doesn't start till February. February. Yeah. yeah when we, does this? When? When does it start? Uh, like the begin, like February fifth is when pitchers and catchers report. So, oh, okay. And we're trying to we're trying to get ahead of. I'm not that. watching baseball this year. I know. I, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I almost wore a Dodgers jersey. <laughs> if if this is so that we're if the Dodgers mm-hmm. do not go all the way. Oh, you can't say that. Don't 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 do it. Don't say I it. will say it. I'm I am. I'm going to say it. 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 All right. If the Dodgers don't, okay, here's my thing. The Dodgers went all the way this year without those two pitchers that they just acquired. Yes. Three. So we, we have now three pitchers we acquired that are really good. Okay. The, well, I, I know the two, the Japanese ones. And then um, Glass now from the race, Tampa Bay. Race. Where's Kershaw going? Is he staying? I, no, he hasn't signed. He's he's still a free agent technically right now. Yeah, so I saw something about the Rangers might pick him up or something. I don't know. I, if that I, was just, well, that's always I don't know if that's why I get my news where Angie got her news about Bellinger. But. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this has been the most exciting offseason 
for a long time. I don't know if okay. for you All right, uh, for our truck guys. Hold on a second. <laughs> yeah, we're this we're doing some baseball. We're talk. doing some baseball talk. Um, yeah. Did you were you following like were you following along when they were saying that he was on a plane to Toronto and like all oh, this yeah. crazy? Yeah, 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 dude, yeah, yeah, it was yeah, insane. Yeah. It was so crazy. Like all these rumors and all this like people yeah. dissect. There was like um, the thing was oh Tony's on a plane going to to Toronto. They made a dinner reservation for fifty people at a sushi restaurant. That absolutely means he's signing with the Toronto Blue yeah. Jays. And yeah. it turns out he's just at home in L.A. <laughs> It was. It's been exciting. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. I got sucked into it too. Um, well, I got sucked into it too because the 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 top five ish, four ish teams that they was in the mix for Otani, mm-hmm. at least um, that they were talking about. The Cubs were also yeah, yeah, the, the name. Cubs the were, Cubs were brought up too. So, but I knew the whole time there was. You have to think of reasoning. Mm-hmm. If you're a pitcher, or if you're going to get paid a lot of money by it doesn't matter which team, you're not. I don't want to live in Chicago. No, for sure. And especially if you're signing want, up for that long of a contract. If I'm rich, I'm not living where the weather sucks. Right. Right. I'm living where it's really nice. Well, and, you know, yeah, because, like, when you get caught up in the mix, it's easy to get caught up in that stuff. Like, oh, yeah, all of these things make sense. He's going here. But then you, like, after it's all done and I've objectively looked at it for a few days, I'm like, of course it makes perfect sense that he went with the Dodgers and stayed here. Because he was already here for six years with the Angels. He's yep. built this gigantic Japanese fan base in Southern California. Yeah. It's yeah. like all of these things just make perfect sense. And then with does, Yamamoto, yeah, it, like that made perfect sense too. like, you know, the Yamamoto was going to go to the Yankees. You know, there was like it was it was basically between the Yankees and the Dodgers. Yeah. And um, so he uh, he ultimately picked the Dodgers. But it makes perfect sense because Otani, the the and we won't get way, 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 way into the details where it was like the uh, the um, what's it called? You know, when um, he deferred like all the money he deferred. Was the just the perfect amount of money to sign his friend from Japan that he's played with on the team that he's like really yeah. that they go places with and hang out like of course it makes perfect sense yeah you know anyway yeah but back to the I, I love the comment sections on these things oh my because God, they're, they're I was so I, great but so terrible at the same time they are because the, well because sports fans are some of the worst people ever oh yeah a hundred percent it's bad yeah so like you you I was watching uh, I follow the Bleacher Report mm-hmm. and it's a Cubs thing and so. When Otani was when they, they, all this was happening, you have all this these people. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he doesn't sign, and then oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know what yeah, I mean. Oh, and then, definitely. Then, or they're telling the Dodgers, the Dodgers are stupid for spending that much money, and it's just like if you your team did like, it, you'd be ecstatic. <laughs> exactly. We're all, but we're all, we're all, vict- we all are uh, yeah. guilty of it. Oh for sure. Oh for sure. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, but it's it's if now the 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 whole thing now though is if the Dodgers blow this. Then the comment sections will be alive. I know it's going to be amazing. Like if the Diamondbacks go, like if a team, like if what happened this last year. Well, the joke is now, happens next year. Yeah, the joke is now the eighty-four win Rockies are going to bounce us in the in the NLDS. <laughs> it doesn't matter who does. You know but what I mean? mean like, but, but to to follow the path of the Diamondbacks, just kicking the crap out of us. Yeah, and then uh, you know, and I, and I know, and look, I know guys who are going to us. Yeah, you, us, you're not playing this. Yes, I know, I know all of that. But again, yeah. just hold on. We're busy. Yeah, <laughs> we're sports fanning. We're sports right and we're sporting right now. <laughs> yeah, we already had an hour of truck stuff. Yeah, right? let's do sports stuff. But yeah, it's I'm I'm enjoying it because I just like uh, good baseballs and I like mm-hmm. watch and and so that the uh, I think the Dodgers. It's going to be interesting to watch. You know, but the th- but like you said, like it's if they blow it, you know, that's one thing, but. What happened last year and what's happened? Baseball is a chaotic sport. Like you don't know what's going to yeah. happen. Yeah, because it's it, it, there's so many variables and factors and and there's yeah. so many games. Like you know, it's not like you know the NFL. You play 18 games. So going into the season, if you have the right pieces, you pretty much know who's going to come out at the end. Uh, uh, save a spoiler here and there. Uh, basketball, even more so. There's 84 games in a season. When you put it, when you plug in the right players, you have a very, very good idea on who's going to be at the end. Baseball is none of those things. It is so chaotic and so random. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But what it, no. but what it does is, I mean, obviously, it gives you better chances when you sign these these players who are really, really good. Like you have Mookie Betts and you have Freddie Freeman and now Otani and this new uh, Yamato pitcher. Well, it just seems like the Dodgers just added to what they already had. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. They spent like, a well, nah, and that's also another interesting thing too, since we're because they didn't not spend that much. Yeah, the, like, the, it's it's like a it's a amount of money 
over so many years and there's and even that's complicated it's like everything else in this world when you get people who like have very strong opinions about things based on facts that they know that they think they understand there's yeah. so there's so much more you don't understand and when people start like trying to make sense of contracts and money and the AAV whatever that is or like the the tax and the the ca- we have no understanding of it we are just simple Baseball the, enthusiasts who know nothing about this stuff. Yeah, because this is what happens. They go, oh, they spent seven hundred million on Otani. That does. It's like it's like the money's gone and there's no money coming in. Yeah, they don't understand that the amount of money coming in mm-hmm. is going to supersede that. Oh, for sure. And also, it's not like they just okay, they just handed him a stack of seven hundred million dollars. Like it doesn't work. Like yeah. it's it's very complicated. But no, it's going to bring in so much money in revenue. Oh, they're going to if they spend a billion on these two guys, they're going to make five billion. You know, they're going to yeah. make a lot of money. But anyway. these the people that run these things aren't stupid. That's, That's what that, I've everyone said. thinks that everyone thinks that like like. It's, it, this is so simple and it's not it, so simple. and that's the thing and we kind of like even touched that on that with with doug a little bit like you know when we were talking about like when we kind of got into the mud a little bit about like taxes and stuff like oh you're yeah, not yeah. you're not smarter than these people <laughs> you know? well and you and the simple fact too is when people do complain about tax yeah. like this is going to get a little weird but yeah Uh-oh. you always see <laughs> you always see people complain about taxes mm-hmm. but you never t- see people s- Talk about the advantages of taxes. Yeah, that's true. Because there are way more advantages Mm -hmm. to taxes than disadvantages. Yeah. Paying things sucks. It's just like, um, I don't want to pay for my Maverick. I don't want to go down and give Ford money for my Maverick. Mm -hmm. But I sure as hell like getting in it and And getting to the store and getting back. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, I hate paying for taxes, but I also enjoy freeways and roads and all that Mm -hmm. so like it's just funny when people think like stopping this process make will make it better Mm -hmm. no it it will not make it better yeah no i don't i don't like it that we there's there are so many things that we think we know about and we don't yeah oh and that's the thing and that's why like when you we talk about sports specifically and and talk about this money and stuff i don't care man i it how much you know how much of that 700 million i gave them zero dollars yeah, and I'm gonna just have fun and watch this thing that brings me joy, and I enjoy doing, and it's gonna be fun and whatever. Exactly. And if they yeah. and if they blow it, then I might be angry for a little bit, but whatever. Then you move on. And that actually took I, me a long time to learn. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. That, well, you were. It's funny you're because you were still a fairly new baseball fan. True. When when you started doing all this stuff, mm-hmm. so you guys you guys just went really hardcore, mm-hmm. and I was like, man, it's gonna suck. This is going to suck. It's a when different. You... Well, because we came out, we came into ba- being baseball fans out of coming uh, out of basketball fans yeah. and basketball. I mean, it's it's basketball is a high energy sports, high scoring sport. Like I said, you, you, you it, almost like the, the hurts, like it sucks when your team doesn't win, but the hurts almost hurt less in, in different sports because yeah. you can have kind of have a projection on how things are going to go. Baseball yeah. is like I've said earlier, it is so chaotic and so random. The hurts hurt even more. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's the difference, I think. And it's and with baseball, the season again could, could be going so well for so long mm-hmm. and it feels so good. And then it's just the, like what happened to the Cubs last year. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Like I'm watching this <laughs> like after spring break. I'm like, this is it was they were the best team after spring break mm-hmm. and all the baseball and all this stuff. And I'm just like, oh, and they get this feeling. And then they just crash and burn, and you're just like. And more specifically, the Cubs team of a couple years ago when the Dodgers, when they no hit the Dodgers and then just. I mean, like that. That's it's just collapse. Yeah, that's because, the hurt. Be, yeah, because you're like, why? Yeah, what what is happening here? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, what happened to the the good team? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, that's our baseball chat for today. <laughs> People yeah. are like, I don't care, man. Talk that was charts. our post podcast. We that we didn't. St- we did, we could have stopped recording and then talked about that. That's, that's true. what we would have done. But we ate up a little more time. Yeah. And now, no, we're done. Now we could go to the post podcast. Yeah. Which is good. We're, we we about an hour right now. Yeah, we're a little over an hour. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. So is there anything else to talk about? Um, no, I don't think so. No. Next week, next week's episode is going to be great because we have we're going to unveil some stuff. People are going to be excited. We're gonna. Um, uh, it's going to be great. Next ne- next week's episode is going to be great. This week's yes. episode. Enjoy Christmas. Enjoy if you're listening again. If you're listening on Christmas. Sorry, we bored you with baseball talk and truck talk on this wonderful holiday yeah come back tomorrow or come back next week when we really get in the weeds about everything 
Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, go to our websites, livelifecustom.com, grinder-tv.com. We're giving away an Accura E-Level kit. Uh, every five dollars spent on our websites, one entry into the drawing. Go do that. And I have some, and I have some talls left on my website in the new design. Oh, that's cool. Because I wear some of the reprint. Yeah, people. Yeah, I don't. Well, we'll talk about that next week about talls and ordering and stuff like that too. Talls are good for pre-orders. Yeah, that's yeah, that is that's true. That's why you always do a pre-order. Because I'll tell you what, coming from a a guy, when you have like when you're not an av an average build. Mm -hmm. Like a, if whether you're a bigger guy or a smaller guy or a taller guy, those guys get left out a lot of times yeah. when it comes to shirts. Yeah, it so is. they appreciate it when you do talls and, you know, a little bit bigger. Yeah. So. All right, cool. Well, we'll talk about it next week. All right. All right. Bye. Cool. Later. <laughs>